Hey, it's Semester Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. Today I'm in Wyoming, I believe. I said Idaho in other videos. I think it's Wyoming. I have a 2019 Chevy Silverado off the LT. This is the volume model. Let's go ahead and take a look at this and see what you get for your money. <laughs> Okay, let's start on the outside here. You have, you have some chrome in this LT model. There is a color match RST that has a body color match, but this has the chrome. We have some tow hooks. We have 18 inch wheels, Wrangler Goodyear wheels. Uh, we have a new exterior design. It's uh, more rounded wheel wells. Uh, this is a Z71 package, so it's got the shocks um, and it's got uh, some other bells and whistles. We'll get to those in a minute. Um, we have on the back side, new for this year, we have the Chevrolet embossed in the back instead of having the bow tie, Silverado LT. So let's hop inside and we'll talk about this 2019 Chevy Silverado. So before we hop in, I want to talk about a few things uh, that were kind of interesting to me is that first, okay, you're fine. Okay, be quiet. <laughs> is that the first thing to notice is that the this has a bench seat. That's something you don't see very often in reviews, is this bench seat. Okay, inside we have a crew cab, which is a very popular uh, cab configuration these days. We have a five foot nine inch bed, which is about 70% of their sales are with that bed. It's, it's a pretty popular um, bed configuration. The LT is a volume seller. Uh, about 80% of the trucks they sell are in LT, or 65 to 75 65 to 75% of the trucks they sell, excuse me, are in the LT model. So this is the volume set that most people are buying is this pickup. Another thing to think about is that regular cab. People talk about regular cab all the time. Is that regular cab has dropped down less than 5 to 6% of the marketplace. So really I'm going to offer it in work truck. It's going to be in the following year. They'll have the work truck version of this with regular cab. You can still buy it. It's still available. It comes in an 8-foot bed. Um, we'll be in 2019. But this is where the market's at. This is what people are buying. Um, this comes pretty well loaded. We have a, a pretty decent size infotainment screen, not as big as, say, Ram's huge Tesla wannabe screen. But we have a lot of features that people want. But this is the 5.3 liter V8. It comes in a 6.2. Our starting MSRP on this one, I'm looking right now, is $42,600. And it, like I said, this does have the Z71 off road package. That's uh, some monotude sho shocks, hill descent control, skid plates, a high capacity air cleaner, the auto locking rear differential. So that's an E80 locker. It's been popular for a Chevy for many years. What's interesting about this is you engage it in four low and it will show you either on the screen as far as wheel slippage, but it auto locks. You can't control it inside the cabin. You can only control it. You basically don't control it at all. It just helps engages when it needs to engage. What that does is it locks both wheels together and they spin at the same rate and it keeps slippage down. That's what's the locking differential in the rear. Uh, two speed transfer case, Z71 badge. It's got dual polished outlets on the exhaust. That's interesting this year that they're actually molded in part of the bumper. So if you were to do an aftermarket exhaust, you may run into some more price points and, and some concerns about whether the exhaust tips come out. It's gonna be really hard to change those because they are part of the bumper. Um, 18 inch uh, silver wheels, all terrain tires. Uh, this does have the tailgate with the lift assist, which is really interesting. It's an aluminum tailgate, and as you, you can basically lift it basically with a couple fingers. Like It's really light, and it locks. When you lock the truck, you lock the tailgate. That cuts down on theft. A nice kind of feature. Um, remote vehicle start I have in this one, which is a package. These are all part of the convenience packages, which Chevy was telling me a lot of people just go for. It's a $2,000 package. If you're curious, the Z71 package is $1,545. The convenience package has dual zone climate control. It has a seat adjuster, 10-way um, seat with lumbar, uh, heated power, heated driver and front passenger, uh, heated driver seat and front passenger. So both front seats have heat. Uh, under seat storage, which I showed you, which is underneath the bench seat. Uh, steering column, manual tilt and telescoping. There's uh, second row USBs. Sorry, I had a, had a bug get in my nose. Uh, second row USBs and rear window defogger. Def Fogger, <laughs> power outlet in the rear, keyless open start, and steering wheel. It's a leather wrapped steering wheel. I want to talk about a couple things before I wrap up this quick review. First drive a bit. Um, this 
is the new uh, key fob. It's kind of interesting. It's probably, I don't even know if it's three inches, maybe it's a very small key fob. Fits in the palm of your hand, uh, really lightweight. Might be a little hard, easy to lose because it's its size. There is a key. You can see that slot, maybe right here, there's a slot that comes up. There's a key that comes out. Um, the tailgate does, you can remotely access the tailgate to drop it. Does have auto start, stop and unlock and lock. Um, in the rear seats, I can feel them. Let me show you these rear seats. Okay, let's hop into the rear. So, one of the first thing you're gonna notice in the back of these crew cabs is they've made it bigger. It's like three inches bigger. This is more like the Toyota Tundra was when it first came out where it was really big, it's, I guess it still is, or the Ram Mega Cab. If you remember those cabs were really big. That's what we got back here. So I'm gonna turn this and show you my feet. Let me turn, show my feet and see how much room I have. I mean, this is, this is, I'm fully extended with my legs. I got all sorts of room back here. This is a big feature these days. I believe the next generation in truck fights, who's best, is who does the best job in the rear seats. That's gonna be a new thing moving forward. But what's nice about this rear, rear seats is that in the back of the center console, which I'll flip the camera to show you, in the back of the center console, we have two USB chargers. We have an adapter for the cigarette lighter um, hookup, and we have AC vents. So we can get the cooling air back here. We can charge our uh, phones back here. So the big question is, how does it ride? I took this truck for a quick spin. Sorry, there's no GoPro video inside. I was really busy doing a bunch of videos for this truck. So it rides pretty nice. Uh, the frame is stiffer, which we've seen in other videos if you've been watching on the series and channels. Um, there's, I have a bunch of videos about the pickup. It's a stiffer frame, and so they're able just to dial in just the wheels and tires and just the front and rear suspension and how that's going to handle the road vibrations. They did a good job. It, it rides markedly better um, That's versus other prior generation Silverados. And the 5.3 liter V8 that I was driving, it's a pretty good engine. You know, to me, it's a little sluggish when you're in a passing situation. You got to wait for it to kind of catch up, which that's mated to the eight speed transmission. There might be an opportunity there to uh, change some of the shift patterns, or it could just be me. There is a cool sport mode. If you turn sport mode, uh, you have a really good time. And there is a, a towing mode as well. So <clears throat> really smooth ride, uh, pretty good power. I am a bigger fan of the 6.2 liter V8. It used to be a gas guzzler. And to me, it's not... <clears throat> To me, it's not quite the gas guzzler it once was, and it's just a lot of power, and it's a lot more fun to drive. Now, interestingly enough, they're going to have eight, or six, excuse me, six powertrain options. Uh, I'm going to get this kind of close to the screen so you can see it, and they're going to have eight different configurations of trims. Uh, the What's interesting, if you're taking a screenshot of that, is that the uh, they're still going to offer the active fuel management system. It's going to be in a 5.3 liter V8, and it's going to be offered in the 5.3 liter V8 as well. There's going to be a dynamic fuel management and active fuel management. The turbo is going to have active fuel management. The 4.3 liter V6 is going to have active fuel. The 6.2 is going to be dynamic fuel. Stop me if you're not keeping track of all this stuff because talk about confusing. I don't know why you'd offer two different V8s. Um, it's kind of interesting. I think the other V8 is going to be more for work truck would make more sense to me. The uh, dynamic fuel management in the V8 and the 2.7 liter engine, the 6.2 liter engine, and the uh, turbo diesels when it comes out later this fall are all going to have start stop. Now that's going to get a lot of people kind of confused if you haven't driven a pickup with that for quite a while. Is a start stop, gonna, when you go to stop sign, it's going to stop and it's going to kill the engine. Uh, you put the little bit of gas in, like hit the throttle, and it's going to pick right up back and you're going to take off. Um, there is a st there is a button for that on some of the trucks will have a piano key you can turn that on and off um, It's going to be a little confusing for a lot of people and then the uh, 6.2 and the 3 liter is going to have a 10 speed that the 3 liter turbo diesel The rest of them could have eight speeds So I, I do want to take a minute here because I think that the elephant in the room with this pickup is a couple things First of all, it's going to be the front-end styling. It's really polarizing uh, you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it um, I was thinking more that they would go classic styling across their lineup and then when it came to the Trail Boss version, really go all in and make that polarizing style. But they didn't. They ended, didn't polarizing style all across the board and so it's a pretty interesting look. Um, I don't know. Uh, the work truck models, which I'm going to do a video later on today that should be up, um, they have a really different styling on the front end. They don't have the slit eyes. They're more of a regular headlight. I kind of like that styling better. 
Um, I do think the tailgate's interesting as well. With the stamp lettering, um, it's really hard to see, like if it's a Chevrolet or not, especially white on white. Even it, it just you can't tell what's in front of you. It's like pretty much blacked out from a distance. Um, I do. They do offer a lettering package as an accessory that will actually color that in with a color. I think that's a definite. Um, I would actually prefer the bow tie in the back and the lettering in the front. That'd be me. Um, a couple of things I want to talk about with this pickup is they they didn't do anything in the interior, which is kind of disappointing to me. Uh, the the market right now is all about interiors. You got Ford and Ram that are battling it out on who's got the better looking interior, and Chevy seemed like they passed the buck on that one. I'm not really sure why. Um, even in my drive book of all my stats and what's going on and cool quotes and such from this truck, um, they really they don't talk about interior well at all. It's it's the truck's larger, um, three inches longer. It's uh, lighter, weighs up to 450 pounds lighter. Got some really cool trailer towing technologies. Um, but yeah, nothing nothing on interior, and I don't really understand that very much. Um, I think you're going to find that uh, if, if you're a Chevy faithful, it's going to be a much improved Silverado. You're going to like a lot of the features. I do think if you're in the marketplace looking around at a bunch of different trucks all at once, I think you're going to see some pretty stark differences between uh, Chevrolets, uh, the Silverados especially, the Chevy Silverados, and Ram and Fords. I think you're going to see some really stark differences in styling and technology and how big the infotainment screen is getting. Um, so it's just kind of interesting. It was kind of interesting to see that point of view uh, and to notice that they, they just decided not to do a few things. Like there is no adaptive cruise control in this. They decided just literally not to do it, um, which I think is a very interesting play. You know, it, it's you're kind of giving customers what they're really actually using, but you're taking away even the option your competitors are already offering, like standard across the board. So just an interesting pickup um, and had a great time driving it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit subscribe. You like to see what, you're do see what I'm doing and all my blah, 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 blah mess ups. Uh, we have a good time. Uh, send hate mail to Tim at pickuptruck.com. Uh, send put hate mail comments below. Yes, I was in Wyoming. I said Idaho in some other videos. You might tell me about that. So keep letting me know. Uh, find my mistakes. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you down the road.